Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. Using a throwaway account because my friends and relatives know about me and I don't want to make them aware of my situation? I'm literally going insane at this moment and I can't think straight, but I will try my best to list out as many details as I can recall. So, I'm a 39-year-old guy and my wife is 24. We've been happily married for roughly six years. We got, got married in a hurry because my wife, who was 18 years, got pregnant, and after a series of difficult situations, we finally settled down. I am the breadwinner of the family, and my wife is SAHM of our six-year-old son. Even though she stays at home the whole day, she takes up no job or hobby that could make us some extra money. And I'm okay with working hard for the money because men need to put food on the table, even though she does the usual chores and contributes nothing to the house. I'm still in love with her. Two nights before Easter, she suggested going to my parents' house to visit them, and her exact words were, going to clear our heads and fill the gap within the family's warmth. So for a little backstory about the gap that she was talking about is her being upset and depressed over my extramarital affairs. I know this was very wrong of me, but I had my reasons. My wife was always running after our child, so she never had enough energy for us to have proper personal time. And as she barely takes care of herself, and sometimes she doesn't look sexy enough to turn me on. So I let off some steam outside of our marriage. I'm a Christian man, and I would never commit any sin, so what I did was given a thought and seemed okay, but I didn't know it would upset her to this amount. So, to save our marriage, as I love her a lot, I apologize and promise to never do it again, and I have also kept my promise to this day. But she keeps holding on to that grudge. But I thought, after this family trip to my parents' house, and after my mom explaining to her how forgiving is important in relationships, that she will be back to being normal and start being more cheerful and herself again. As we carried on our plan to visit my parents on Easter, everything was smooth sailing. We went to our parents, who lived two hours away from our place. We took gifts for them and had a really good time together until evening. Here's what happened. My wife took the car keys from me because she had to grab some baby stuff in the car. As we were all sitting and talking, the best option was for her to carry the baby with her. Time passes and I notice that my wife has gone to bring the baby stuff for way too long. I assumed that she came inside, but I, I missed her entrance because I was busy talking to my father. After an hour or so, I go inside to search for her. She was nowhere to be found, nor was her purse or phone or my son. So I asked my mom where she was. To her surprise, she thought that she was still inside the car, and no way she would be in the car for a whole hour. We collectively searched for her, and she was nowhere to be found. Then, when I went to check the front yard, I noticed my car wasn't there either. I panicked, because that car was really expensive, and I saved for two years to pay for that car, plus my wife and son were also missing along with it. I assumed someone robbed the car while my wife and son were in it. At this point, I was sick and worried about everything. So I kept on calling my wife's phone and she didn't pick up. After calling her several times, when she picks up, you can see some hope of getting my car and family back. But after saying hello for a while, the only thing I could hear was my son saying, We will never see you again, and hanging up. Before I could process anything or call her back, she has blocked me and my family from everywhere. And now her number is completely and doesn't exist. Now I am stuck at my parents' house because she took my car. We have already called the cops and explained how my wife kidnapped my son and took him and stole my car and ran away somewhere. I have tried contacting her family, but they don't respond to my calls or texts because they think I'm abusive, toxic, and trapped their daughter by getting her pregnant only when she was the one who was eager to sleep with me. 
Everything is so messy and makes me angry enough to break a few steel rods of my bare hands, but I am saving up all this anger for my wife to face. She has a lot of explaining to do, and I don't really think I can trust her anymore. She has to literally climb mountains to bring my trust back to her. I am also worried about my son, who must be missing me a lot. She really made a child say such a bad thing to his own father. I may forgive her, but God would never. I expected this to be a very sympathetic community who would have understood me and would have understood how hurt I was by being humiliated in front of my parents. And to clear it for everyone, I just knew her when she was 17 years old. I made a move on her after she turned 18. So me being a pedophile or groomer is out of the question. And y'all are basically blaming me for stupid things and accusing me of crimes I never committed. My wife stole my car and kidnapped my son too. This is what we call a crime. If anyone should be going to jail, it should be her, not me. And I don't think my wife would ever have the courage and guts to divorce me. I'm not letting her go until I feel like that's really a good thing to do. No, the cops still haven't found my car or family. I'm doing everything I can. If I find out my son is being hurt in any way or my car being damaged, I would take this matter to the court and sue her. I've been living in my house. I also have a friend over to take care of the house. She understands my situation and actually sees my wife is wrong in all of these matters and is there whenever I need support. So the cops found out about my wife and my son. They were living at my wife's mother's house. I never thought that she would reconnect with people who called me toxic and abusive. Being hurt is an understatement in this. I never thought that she would fall this low in my eyes. We have yet to speak, but she is adamant about getting divorced because, in her own words, what I have heard from the cops, she said, I am an emotionally abusive and cheating screwhead who makes her feel depressed. My heart was completely shattered after hearing all these things. I never understood why she would feel heartbroken around me. We have yet to speak. I hope we can do it as soon as possible and reach a peaceful agreement and go back to being happily married again. And I also got my car back. I'm not pressing charges on her because I love her and I don't want to give her a hard time. So it's been a month now and a lot has happened since then. My wife and I, should I say ex-wife, doesn't want to be married with me anymore, so we're getting a divorce. And as for our son, she got custody to have him, and I have to send money to her for bearing all the expenses, such as food, shelter, and school. I only get to visit my son twice a month because his mother claims I have emotionally and financially abused her to an extent that has caused her mental distress. From what I have heard, she goes from therapy and other psychiatric help. I honestly don't know why. It all seems total of a BS to me, and she just made it up to go away from me and have some money because she has zero capability of earning her own. I'm doing well. I've gotten a new girlfriend, and she's really chill and not insecure to let me talk to other women. I've gone back to work. It's pretty stressful, you know, but as a man, I have it completely under control. WTF? I have no words for this level of delusion and narcissism. You are the biggest a-hole I have read about in my whole Reddit browsing span. So first, you knock up an 18-year-old and force her to marry you and blame her for being eager to defend yourself while explaining why you knocked up an 18-year-old? A big yikes. I just knew this was going to be a gross story when I saw the age gap in the first paragraph and the audacity to act like the hero saving face? Yes, your wife's no soon-to-be ex-wife's family is right about you. You are a groomer and an abuser and that poor kid who has to grow up and actually know what kind of shit his own father is. And then you blame her for being a S-A-H-M and how tiring your job is. And when she is actually running the house and looking after your kid 24-7, you cheat on her and think that an excuse can save you? Sir, I don't know you, but knowing this much is more than enough for me to call you a really bad person. And what true love? It's just you abusing an innocent woman for several years. And she did nothing wrong.
If I were her, I would run away too. Please have some care of the world and escort yourself to some good mental hospital and work on yourself. Okay, this has to be fake. And the fact that there are NTA comments makes me lose faith in humanity. Like, didn't you people read what he wrote? You don't even have to read the whole thing to declare him something worse than an a-hole. Honestly? sucks to be you and living in that blind shell you live in. Please think of everything you are changing. You may end up in a better place in hell. Next story. My younger sister, 28, married two years ago. Her husband, 35, was a widower with kids, an 11-year-old boy and a 10-year-old girl. His first wife died five years ago, I believe, Brother-in-law and his kids were nowhere near ready for him to remarry. His family seemed to have pushed the issue and he found my sister. She was all in, fell madly in love with him and the kids, but has never returned it. They are so damn disrespectful to my sister. They constantly remind her that she's not the first wife. He will actively say things in front of everyone about how much he misses his true wife and how you only have one real love in life and losing that is the worst thing ever. My sister has confided in me that she often feels like she made a mistake, but she's not ready to admit it. She leans on me, and I try to help her. The kids have told my sister that she will never be as special as their mom, that their mom was the best, and my sister is poop. My sister's birthday was in November, and we had a small family celebration. Right in the middle of it, the kids protested their need to attend and asked why they would celebrate her when she's not important to them. Brother-in-law said nothing. I told them it wasn't a kind thing to say. They laughed at the idea of being kind to my sister. They also said they didn't care what I thought because I wasn't there for them. Then, later as we all ate cake and he talked about his late wife's 28th birthday and how he had spent weeks planning a party for her because She's had a rough year. And then he and the kids started planning a week-long celebration for what would have been his late wife's 35th birthday later this year. I've had enough. My sister isn't ready to do anything. But I have been clear I will not allow them to come into my house and disrespect my sister and shit all over her. Brother-in-law has tried to come with my sister a few times, him and the kids, and I have been firm in my stance. I also refuse to host any family dinners because I do not want them in my home. Brother-in-law is pissed. My sister said my house is a nice break from them. He said the kids are kids and we're all family. I told him he and his kids don't appear to think so. And they're certainly not treating any of us like we're family. The rest of my family thinks I'm maybe stepping too far since he is my sister's husband. A-I-T-A? NTA, your brother-in-law and his kids are mean and disrespectful of your sister. I don't know why they married to start off with. No one is saying they should forget their mom, mother, but she doesn't have to be shoved into your sister's face all the time as being the best and that she's basically crap. The least the children can do is show her respect, but they don't see their father doing that, so why should they? If I were your sister, I would leave this shit show of a marriage. NTA. This is not a marriage. IMO. Brother-in-law didn't seek for a wife, a mother. He searched for a bang maid, somebody to do the chores, raise the kids and warm his bed, but an equal partner? No. I hope your sister has an IUD as birth control so he can't baby trap her into staying if she someday wakes up and decides to leave. Do not count on the pill. They can be tampered with. A quick heating in the microwave with a hairdryer. Deep done. Next story. First day, I was leaving work and this guy I work with named Jim called my name and asked if I was leaving. I said, yeah. He asked if I'd give Lisa a ride home because she was having car trouble. Lisa was standing right there, so it was kind of weird. Like, why couldn't she ask herself? I asked where she lived. She was going in the complete opposite direction of where I live. So I said no and went home. This is a retail job and was three to four in the afternoon, so it's not like she was standing in the parking lot in the middle of the night. 
the store would be open another eight hours. I didn't think it was a big deal. Well, at work yesterday, my co-worker, Rob, said, I heard Lisa asked you to give her a ride and you said no. I said, Lisa didn't even ask me. Jim did. But yeah, he said, dude, that's mean. I said, she was going in the complete opposite direction I was and she barely even talks to me besides when she's commenting on my purchases. He said, so what? She needed help. Would you have given a friend a ride if it was out of the way? I said, yeah. He said, see, you just didn't want to help Lisa because you don't like her. That's a jerk move. It's true that I don't like Lisa and I would have given a friend a ride to where she was going, but that's because they're a friend. But that same logic, why didn't Lisa ask a friend? In the past, I felt like Lisa talks down to me because I'm younger than her. She's a cashier, and I usually, when I go on break, she's the only cashier that's open, so I have to go to her to check out. I bring a sandwich to work, and we'll buy chips or something else to eat with it on my first break. Then on my second, I get a candy bar or something. Lisa constantly makes comments about it. Junk food again. Don't you ever eat anything healthy? You should have an apple. Do your parents know you eat this much junk food at work? I'm 22, so that made no sense. I eat plenty healthy when I'm not working, but that's none of her business. She's not my dietitian. Then, a month or so ago, I bought a new TV. I was talking to someone about it on break. Lisa was there and butted in. You won't be able to spend like that when you're an adult and you move out. You have bills to pay. I don't live at home, and again, I'm 22. I just didn't want to have to drive 15 minutes in the opposite direction for someone that never even talks to me, besides to talk to me like a 12-year-old. A-I-T-A? N-T-A. I mean, could nobody else give Lisa a ride home? Also, do you look especially young? Because apparently everyone you work with seems to think it's okay to lecture you about whatever they feel like you've done wrong, whether it's not helping somebody in need that guy was annoying, or eating too much junk food, I mean, that would get very annoying very fast. Anyway, why don't they just call an Uber like everybody else? You don't have to give her a ride, and you don't even have to give anybody an explanation as to why you weren't doing it. I have no idea. I'm sure someone would have given her a ride eventually, but she probably didn't want to wait, and I was the only one that got off at 3.30, I think. I do look really young. I get carded constantly, even if I buy a lottery ticket. But Rob knows how old I am, so I have no idea what his deal was. He's the type that wants everyone to get along. NTA. Sounds like Lisa should be learning a valuable lesson here. When you aren't nice to people, don't be surprised when they aren't nice back. Why would anyone want to sit in a car with someone who belittles them? I understand why it was your responsibility to get her home. If she truly thinks she's the adult and you are the child, then she should have been more than capable of finding her own way.